So far, we have seen that chemical disasters can lead to anxiety, societal disruption and fear. But what are risks in the chemical industry exactly? And how are these dealt with? Risks related to chemical industrial activities are diverse. On the one hand, there are the small risks such as falling from stairs, falling from height, tripping and slipping and so on. And as discussed in the introduction to this module, these risks are called type 1 risks. And they can be found in every industrial sector. They can be treated in a similar way in every organization. On the other hand, the large risks or type 2 risks in the chemical industry are related to the industrial activities within chemical companies, that is, the use, storage, processing of chemical substances. Chemicals are characterized by properties that make them hazardous, such as their toxicity, their flammability, their potential to explode, and so on. And these hazardous materials are often contained in chemical installations under high pressure and at high temperatures. Therefore, the very nature of chemical industrial activities determines the existence of type 2 risks, or so-called process risks, unique to this industrial sector. Large safety investments are required to tackle prevention and mitigation of process risks. And this is the field of process safety management and process security management. A factor that needs to be considered when dealing with risks in the chemical industry is a different perception between experts and laypeople. Experts are more inclined to mainly deal with probabilities in combination with credible consequences and thereby tend to focus much on type 1 risks and also on type 2 risks that they deem credible. In this way they tend to disregard incredible type 2 risks. Lay people, on the other hand, tend to attach much more value to consequences than to probabilities and thus they also value incredible scenarios. Thus, Civilians and type two risks are type two risks driven and tend to undervalue type one risks. In case of type two risks in the chemical industry, which are risks characterized with a very high impact in combination with a very low likelihood, this can make an important difference. It can lead to miscommunications and misunderstandings and eventually to distrust between civilians and companies and government. Whether dealing with process safety risks or process security risks, risks always need to be prioritized. Budgets need to be allocated to invest in prevention and mitigation measures based on the risk prioritization. Here the divergence in viewpoints of lay people and experts also has consequences. The risk prioritization of laymen will largely be based on impact, while the risk prioritization of experts will be based on the equal combination of impact and likelihood. So how can we bridge this gap in perception? In order to bridge the gap, it is vital to understand an important psychological principle in the decision-making process called loss aversion. Loss aversion refers to people's tendency to prefer avoiding losses over equivalent gains. Let us now consider the following example. Assume you were given two options. Option one, I will give you 5,000 euros with certainty and option two, we toss a coin, and when it turns out to be heads, you receive nothing. Tails, you receive 10,000 euros. What option would you prefer? By far, most people prefer the first option, 5,000 euros with certainty. Let's now frame this example another way. That is in terms of losses. Option one, you have to pay me 5,000 euros with certainty, and option two, we toss a coin. If it is heads, you pay me nothing. If it is tails, you pay me 10,000 euro. What option would you prefer this time? By far, most people in this case prefer to gamble. They dislike losing with certainty. In other words, when it comes to gains, people choose certainty. When it comes to losses, people prefer to gamble. Translating this principle into safety terminology, company top management would be more inclined to invest in production which are considered certain gains, than to invest in prevention, which is considered as uncertain gains. Also, top management is more inclined to risk highly improbable accidents perceived as uncertain losses than to make large investments in dealing with such, with such accidents, which are perceived as certain losses. Also, top management is more inclined to risk highly improbable accidents perceived as uncertain losses than to make large investments in dealing with such accidents, 
which are perceived as certain losses. So top management and decision makers should therefore be aware of this basic principle and take it into account when making prevention investment decisions for dealing with process risks. By doing so, decisions will automatically be more balanced and there will be more alignment between experts and laymen. So, what have we learned? Risks related to chemical industrial activities are diverse and can lead to fear and outrage in society. Fortunately, not many chemical disasters happen and the chemical industry puts a lot of attention on safety. Every time an accident involving chemical substances happens, the license to operate of chemical industrial activities is questioned. Societal trust goes down, rightfully so, since no disaster involving hazardous chemicals should be able to happen. However, when chemical disasters do occur, there is a divergence in perception of risk between laymen and experts. Risk assessors in the chemical industry, that is, experts, see risk as a combination of probability and impact, whereas the general public, or laymen, place a lot of emphasis on impact. This divergence can lead to miscommunication and mistrust. To solve this divergence, the mentality of some decision makers needs to be improved. If decision makers would understand that operational safety is just as important for business as production and innovation, then perhaps better decisions would be made regarding process risks in the chemical industry. This can be done by putting adequate emphasis on loss aversion and its impact on safety investment decision making. Many disasters, such as the Deepwater Horizon offshore accident or the Bhopal toxic gas disaster, would probably not have occurred if this had been the case.